Get ready for data overload. I've been testing Anchor's new Prime Powerbank 26K 300 watts over the past few weeks, and this is my full review of Anchor's most powerful power bank yet. Let's start diving into the numbers. Anchor says this is a 26,250 milliamp hour portable charger, but that number doesn't tell the whole story. The capacity here is 99.75 watt hours, which is just a quarter watt hour under the maximum limit for airlines. But not all 99.75 watt hours are usable. Across numerous discharge tests at various voltages, I measured between 88 and 97 watt hours of output, averaging about 91 watt hours. And to understand the true efficiency of the power bank, we also need to know how much energy is required to fully recharge the unit, which in my testing ended up being about 101 to 112 watt hours averaging out to about 105. So if we take the average measured output divided by the average measured input, we get a total efficiency of 87%, which is very good, but not especially surprising considering the price point. One of Anchor's big marketing claims with this portable charger is the ability to recharge at up to 250 watts using both USB-C ports. Now, if you just use one USB-C port, you're capped out at 140 watts, unless you have Anchor's special charger that'll do 150 watts with a proprietary protocol, but that's only slightly faster because unfortunately this does not support 36 volt or 48 volt input as the EPR spec of power delivery has allowed for years now. So again, you'll need two USB-C ports to take advantage of those really fast input speeds. Now in my testing, recharging from zero to 50% took 23 minutes at 140 watts and 150 watts was just one minute faster. At 250 watts, it took just 15 minutes to reach 50%, which could be very handy if you find yourself with very limited time to access the grid. Interestingly, the full recharge times are not what you would expect. It took 59 minutes at 140 watts to get to 100%, 56 minutes at 150 watts, but a longer hour and two minutes at 250 watts. This means charging from 50% to 100% takes nearly 40% longer at 250 watts than at 150 watts. And this is because the power bank significantly throttles back the input speed after very long at 250 watts. Even though the unit doesn't get that hot, it's just slightly warmer to the touch, it still ends up being slower than just using a single port. So because it took longer for a full recharge at 250 watts than at 150 watts, I decided to do an extra test at 200 watts to see how it would fare. And this one did much better. It got to 50% in just 17 minutes and fully recharged in just 48 minutes, making it by far the fastest way to get from zero to 100% of the four methods that I tested. Now, an important thing to note, recharge times can vary significantly depending on the temperature of your environment. So don't be surprised if your results are a few to even several minutes slower or faster than the times that I presented due to that difference in temperature, especially if you're charging with both USB-C ports. Oh, and the display lies. It shows 100% charged and zero watts coming in when it's still drawing more than 20 watts. This is disappointing to see, and I don't know why Anchor feels the need to deceive the user and trick them into thinking the power bank charges faster than it really does. Now, interestingly, if you have an Anchor wall charger with a display, 
the power bank does not communicate to the wall charger that it wants to lie to the user about being fully charged. So you'll still see the actual wattage that it's charging at on the display of the wall charger. Now, really, this isn't gonna be a big deal for most people in real world use because by the time the power bank shows it's 100%, in reality, it's more than 95% charged. But just to be safe, you may wanna wait 10 or at most 20 minutes before you unplug the unit after it first shows that it's at 100%. On the output side, the power bank supports five, nine, 12, 15, 20, and 28 volt fixed power delivery modes, as well as five to 11 volt at five amp and 4.5 to 21 volt at five amp PPS modes, which should make it just about universally compatible with any power delivery device that requires 140 watts or less. Now I measured the actual voltage at full load on each of the fixed PD modes and they all fell well within the plus or minus 5% USB PD spec. However, compared to Anker's 737 power bank, most of the voltages are just a bit lower. Not a huge deal, but just something I thought I'd point out. In my testing, the power bank can sustain 140 watt single port output for just about the entire capacity. But again, depending on the temperature of your environment, you might notice some throttling in say the last 15 or 20%, especially if you're charging outdoors during the summer. Now when drawing much over 140 watts, the power bank gets quite hot in a very short period of time, much hotter than it ever gets when recharging even at 250 watts, so it will cut back the power if you're using both USB-C ports and again, ramping that power up. In my testing at 160 watts, for example, it held steady for about 30 minutes before throttling back for about the final 15% of charge. And I wouldn't expect much more than 10 or 20 minutes at 200 watt output or higher. Now, if you're interested in the power saving mode, I have to report that it doesn't seem to do much other than restrict the maximum input and output value of the ports. So in power saving mode, input is limited to 140 watts, regardless of whether you're using one or two ports to recharge. And when you're charging two devices with the USB-C ports, C1 gets 90 watts, C2 45 watts, when you're using a USB-A port alongside one of the USB-C ports, that USB-C port is limited to 100 watts. And when you're using all three ports, C1 gets 65 and C2 gets 45 watts. And from my testing, the power saving mode does not change the temperature threshold at which the power bank will begin to throttle. So I wouldn't enable it if you're hoping for a much longer battery lifespan. In my opinion, the real power saving mode with this power bank is to limit your usage of the display. In my testing, it draws nearly 0.4 watts at maximum brightness. That might not sound like a lot, but if you manage to keep the display on at max brightness for an entire day, it would drain over 10% of the capacity. Fortunately, at the minimum 20% brightness, the power draw is much lower and it seems to be less than a 10th of a watt. So I'd highly recommend lowering the brightness in the app, but just note that it will be practically invisible outdoors. Bluetooth on the other hand, seems to use very little power. So if you'd like to be able to check the app once in a while, I would not at all worry about turning Bluetooth off on the power bank every time you're done using the app. It just won't make that much of a difference. Now, speaking of the app, there are a couple of features missing here from Anker's previous Prime Power Bank. At the time of review, there is currently no option to force either port to be input or output only. And although this is usually not a problem, it can be useful if you're connecting into another bi-directional USB-C port, such as one on a laptop. There's also no find device feature that allowed you to use the app to play a sound on the power bank if it was within Bluetooth range of your phone. 
I'm not sure how often that feature was used, but if you have Anchor's previous Prime Power Bank, leave a comment, let us know if you ever used the app to find the power bank. There are a couple other unfortunate changes with the new version. No longer can you view the output and input power of each port individually and the battery percentage on the same screen. There's also no option to see the voltage and amperage of each port on the display like on the previous model. That information is hidden away in the app. And there's no longer an estimated time to empty when charging other devices. But perhaps the difference more people will notice is that there is no screen on the display that shows information about battery health. That's only available on the Anchor app. And there's currently no way to view the cycle count even in the app. Now, hopefully Anchor pushes out some updates to add back some of this functionality, but it's a bit weird that this power bank shipped with multiple features missing from the previous generation. On the bright side though, this new model is noticeably smaller and lighter than Anchor's past high-end power banks. I especially like the slimmer design, which makes it much less awkward in a pocket than the previously boxier designs. You'll still have to tighten your belt a little bit, but if you wanna be able to slip this in a pocket or really any other space that would benefit from a slightly slimmer form factor, this new model is a better solution. The design also feels premium. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of the large black glossy area on the front, the aluminum is very nice and the slightly rounded corners make it feel a bit smaller in the hand. For comparison, Anchor's 737 power bank feels a bit cheaper and much chunkier, even though I prefer its front aesthetic. The new 150 watt charging base still isn't out yet, but I'll leave a link to it below in the description once it launches. Finally, let's talk about pricing. At $230, this thing is expensive, and I would not recommend it to everyone because there's nothing truly groundbreaking here. But Anchor often runs sales, and at $180 or so, it's a little bit more reasonable because that matches the retail price of the previous generation. So if you're someone who's never owned a high-powered power bank before, and you just got a new power-hungry laptop that you'd like to be able to charge on the go, Anchor's new Prime Power Bank 26K 300 watts is one of the best options available. It sits among the top of its class in total efficiency and recharge times, even with the throttling at 250 watts. It also does a good job of sustaining 140 watt single port output, depending on the temperature of your environment. I like to see some updates to the app and the display to at least match the feature set of the previous model. But above all else, I think what makes this power bank stand out from others in its class is the smaller size and lighter weight. That's what's gonna make the biggest difference in day-to-day -day usage for most people. So that wraps up my review of Anchor's Prime Power Bank 26K 300 watts. I know I just threw a lot of data at you, so if you've got questions, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel for future Anchor news and reviews. The 160 watt Prime wall charger is next. Thanks for watching.